What's up, Internet? Big J with Big J's Extreme Fitness, 550 pounds for 10 reps. Huge PR for me. The title of this video is How I Added 300 Pounds to My Squat. And I know what you're saying. That, well, you really haven't only added about 100 pounds or maybe even 50 pounds. But to be honest with you, up until about 9 or 10 years ago, before I started squatting with Mark Bell's knee sleeves and wraps, uh, my knees and hips and back and everything else, elbows, of course, had been in so much pain from not necessarily the, the abuse, well, probably mainly from the abuse, but I was in the military for 10 years and I've worked around the world and a lot of road marches and jumping out of airplanes and whatnot. My knees actually have been hurting since I was 19, 20 years old. But the more I competed in powerlifting in my younger 20s, the more tender and the more painful everything got. And I literally could not squat over 225 pounds. That's two wheels on each side without wrapping my knees. Now, I'm gonna tell you how I got past that and continued my strength curve. Now, obviously, my knees are wrapped in each one of those videos with the 550, I think I put a 500 video up there, and also with the Band Bell Rhino Flex Bar. So I've got the Rhino Flex, and I've actually got the Earthquake Bar, uh, this bar right here, as a matter of fact, and I'm not squatting with that one, but I have in several videos. But look at there, there's a wall full of them right there. And the main reason that I've gotten to where the tendons and the joints are retrained is because of this kinetic training. High kinetics with the earthquake bar shaking like you're crazy, and then the low kinetics with the rhinoflex bar that are still shaking on 825 or 225 to 315 and more. So with that being said, my main problem wasn't my strength. Okay, let me take that back. It was my strength because I was getting weaker because I wasn't training as with the heavy amount of weight that I needed, but the joints and the tendons were suffering so much, and I had so many doctors want to give me painkillers. I had so many people recommend different drugs and steroids and, and the new bane and everything. People that are looking for a quick fix, and this is not a quick fix. It took me probably five or six years to add 300 pounds to my painful 225 to an amazing 550 for 10 yesterday. Now, once again, that box is about 21 inches that I'm squatting on. I've squatted from 12 inches to 15 to 17 to 21 to 23 a couple days ago, back down to 21 for this one. And it's working on the variable strength curve that I'm trying to work through, as well as knowing that the box squats do help. First of all, it's safe. I don't have a spotter and I got 550 on my back. Secondly, even when you have a spotter, you're still going to need to find out where your strength and your weaknesses are and the sticking points are. And once you get strong enough to pause on that box, sit back on it, lean forward and use those hams and glutes to fire back up, you're going to be a stronger squatter for sure, especially if you're working on kinetics in the knees and the hips and the vertebrae, which is a very important part of your core and your abs and everything else that it takes to keep that bar from falling off your back. Now, a lot of people are saying, oh man, that's crazy looking. I'd never try it. I thought I'd never tried it at all either up until Johnny Jackson was squatting a couple, maybe less than a year ago on the box. And I thought I'd try it. I've gotten nothing but stronger and more proficient in my squat. It's an amazing tool to utilize, especially with kinetic training. So with that being said, yeah, I don't do much anymore of regular squats. However, I still do so. I'll Hatfield squat, I'll front squat, I'll back squat, uh, I'll hack squat. There's lots of other exercises. I'll pit, field, pit short squat. There's a lot of other exercises that you incorporate to get stronger, but if you're not as strong, uh, you're not stronger than your weakest link, you'll never be as strong as you can be. Those joints and tendons are your weakest link. Believe me, people that are squatting 1,000 pounds, joints and tendons are still the weakest link. Now, if you can get to where you get those tie-ins and those connectors and those accessories, and I'm not talking about the hips and the glutes, I'm talking about the tie-ins and accessories in the knees and the tie-ins and accessories in the erectors in the back, especially on the presses. You know, people talk about the triceps and the traps and the leg drive. I'm talking about the connectors in between the delts and the pecs and the triceps and the biceps and the deltoids and the biceps. Those are the connectors that I'm talking about getting stronger. The muscles are gonna be as strong as they're hydrated and as strong as they recover. But once you get past the training to the point of the muscles can handle anything you throw at it, within reason, of course, and those tendons can do the same, you're going to be stronger. So I, in fact, have gone from a 225-pound painful squat with knee wraps to a 550 for 10 and no pain whatsoever. That was yesterday. I feel like I've just walked around the mall for a couple of hours with my mom when I was a kid, but my legs feel great. I will definitely be continuing to implement higher and lower box squats just to get through that power curve, sticking point, and then just making my legs feel better. Because you're not only recovering, you're rehabbing, you're prehabbing, you're strengthening, and you're also making those muscles look better. Hope you guys enjoyed these clips. I once again have added 300 pounds safely to my squat by using kinetic type training, as well as the sleeves and the knee wraps and whatnot and good recovery. 
in the last four or five years. I urge you to check into the band belt and check it out for yourself. And hopefully you guys will be using them in the future. Till next time, Tangent Rules Train Hardcore. We'll see you next video.